Hey guys, I'm back with another video. This is a manufacturing example from a textbook, and I will put that in the description below what textbook I'm using. Um, and it's a pretty simple example, um, and I'm just going to jump right in. So um, basically in this problem we have three products that we'd like to manufacture, and we have four different machines, A, B, C, and D, that we can use to produce those products. Um, and we also have a max availability for each machine. Um, we have a revenue per unit, material cost per unit, profit per unit, and max sales for um, each different product. So in this problem, our decision variables are going to be the number of units of each product to produce during the week. Um, and our objective function is going to be to, let's see, um, I think it's maximize the profit. I'm just double checking. Yes, we're maximizing the profit. And they kind of wrote it out nicely, but they get these numbers from this table over here that I just showed you. So it looks like um, what they're doing is, I guess, multiplying our decision variables times our um, revenue minus the cost. Let's see. Yes. Revenue minus the cost for each variable, and then they just simplified it. So here's the simplified version. So we're trying to maximize that equation. Um, and then our constraints, I'm kind of going to go through that again when I program, uh, but of course our availability for each machine, our market constraints, that comes from this table again, so the max sales that we can reach for each product, and those vary for each product as well, um, our, and of course our um, non-negativity constraints, which come in when we actually set our decision variables. Um, and then, let's see... This is just our overall, our simplified um, model, and then we have our solution, which we're going to try to get in Python. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and first define our sets, of course. But we always want to start off with from pulp import. It's frozen. Sorry, from pulp import asterisk um, and let's do a product set because of course we have our P, Q, and R so remember that when you are typing um, a non-numerical um, value in a list you want to have single quotations and I like to capitalize the names of my sets just to um, differentiate, differentiate everything in the problem. Um, machines, of course, we just have A, B, C, and D. I don't know why I can't type right now. Okay, and then we have um, our parameters. And some of it I'm going to copy and paste so that I can fit this all in one video. But so first we want to have our profit parameter, and I'm creating this so that um, it's a lot simpler when we go to um, do our objective function. You could do a parameter um, for each the for each like revenue per unit and material cost per unit, and then subtract it in the objective function. But since they already simplified it for us, I am just going to make a dictionary of the profits just to make it simpler. So we have forty-five, sixty and 50 it looks like 50 and then next I'm gonna call this time so we need a parameter for our um, the amount of time it takes um, where is that table the amount of time it takes to process on a certain machine for a certain product so um, we do need to create a dictionary um, that first starts off with either the product or the machine and then creates um, another um, list within curly brackets in that row. So let's say we start with product P. I'm just going to start with the products so that we'll just have three rows. Um, so we have product P and then we need to write the time for each machine on product or each machine for product P. So um, you do another colon after the P and then you start off with another curly bracket 
And so we're going to say A is 20, B is 12, C is 15, and D is 10. I'm just going down the column right here. Um, so don't forget a colon after each individual letter. Um, and make sure you do this, you have your syntax correct so that um, when we use this within our constraints or within our whatever we use it in, um, it's going to work out nicely if we use loops. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the rest from this solved code that I have just for the sake of time. But do that for Q and R as well. Create a list within or basically I guess like a dictionary within a dictionary um, and then the next thing and if you want to just to make this um, more clear I guess you're kind of gonna do a dictionary within a dictionary whenever you have a parameter that has two subscripts um, it's kind of like when we have to make a decision variable with two loops if it has two subscripts you do the same thing for parameters with two subscripts except we're doing like a list within a list um, Anyways, I just think that's a good way to think about it, just so it's more clear, because I know it can be hard to transfer over everything you saw on paper um, into something like Python. So next what I'm doing is creating this market parameter, and this is just the max amount that we can reach in terms of sales. So um, it's 100 for product P, 40 for Q, And then it looks like R um, is 60. And then, of course, next we need to do our problem variable. Let's see how I am on time. Okay, hopefully I can finish this in time. Don't really want to uh, split this video up. So this is a maximization problem and I call this manufacturing. Feel free to call it whatever you want. And I'm just going to call this X bears. Actually I'm going to call it unit bears since I already called it that before. And I may have to copy and paste a couple things. So um, we use our LP variable dot DICTS. We're going to call this units because it's the units we want to produce of that product. Of course, we, um, we're we just referring to our product set. There's only one subscript, and it's just for products. Um, we don't need to include machines. And then this is just a continuous variable, so you can just set the lower bound to zero for the non-negativity constraint, and that's all you have to do, um, unless you'd like to set an upper bound as none. So then getting into our objective function, let me just pull that back up. It's the just the profit times, it's right here, the profit times our decision variable. So the profit times the amount we produce for each product. So let's call this J and times our decision variable for J and products. Um, so then getting into our constraints, we have our availability constraint. So it's for all machines. So we start off with for I in machines. And you can use, um, if let's say you wanted to use I right here, that's okay. But just keep everything consistent. So then maybe change it up and go to J. Um, for I in machines. But I just use J and then I. Um, and we are summing over the decision variables times the amount of time it takes on that machine. So in other words, the amount of product J produced times the amount of time it takes for product J to be produced on machine I. So for J and products because we are summing over the products and not the machines because once again it's for all machines.
Um, and that's less than 2400 for all of them, so we don't have to write out each constraint. We can. That's why we can use a loop, because they're all 2400. Um, and then we also have this next constraint, which is our market constraint. So again, um, actually not again, this is for all products. So this time we're going to say for J in products, we want to make sure that the amount produced is less than or equal to our market max, market sales limit, I guess you could say. So we're going to say unit underscore vars J, just keep the indexing consistent. less than or equal to our market parameter that we already set with the limits. And that's about it. That's the only constraints we have. And then uh, the non-negativity, which is already included in our, when we set our decision variables. And then we're just going to do, whoa, <laughs> prob.solve, open parentheses, for v and prob.variables, parentheses, so I'm creating a loop that's going to print the variable name. So you say v.name, v.var value, capital V on value. So that's going to print the name and then the value for each variable. And then we would like to print our total profit. And we use our value parentheses prob.objective. And then I can't remember why I subtracted six. Uh, oh, so it says to compute the profit for the week, we reduce this value by six thousand for operating expenses. So we are going to also subtract six thousand to get the correct answer. So um, that is included in our cost. We subtract the six thousand. Just wanted to clarify that. I forgot about that. So. Onto our solution, we get, oh, meant to put a colon here, hopefully no other errors, oh, <laughs> another colon, forgot, how did that happen, LP variable, <laughs> spelled that wrong, Vari uh, variable, And then units should be unit. And now we have our answer. So uh, P is equal to 81.82. Q is equal to 16.36 units. R is equal to 60. And um, once you subtract the 6,000, you get 1,664 1, as the total profit. So I hope this was a good example if you are looking for a manufacturing example on Python and check out my next video for more.